So we're gonna dive into the super amino acid known as NAC. If you haven't heard of NAC before, NAC stands for N-acetylcysteine. That's why we just abbreviated it as NAC. It's just easier to say, right? So N-acetylcysteine. Now, why is this such an important amino acid? And predominantly, this, this amino acid is critical. It's, it's not an essential amino acid. So when I say essential, I mean your body... There are 10 different essential amino acids, meaning you have to eat them in order to get them. You your body can't produce them. The N-acetylcysteine doesn't fall under that category of, your, in essence, your body can produce this. But what happens is, is, is this is actually referred to as a conditionally essential amino acid. And this, this one, N-acetylcysteine and glutamine, probably the two b best examples of conditionally essential amino acids, meaning under certain conditions, under certain circumstances, your body can't produce enough to, to meet the demand to help you overcome problems. So conditionally essential, again, under certain conditions, we can't produce enough. And so that's where th supplementation can be very, very beneficial. So it's a conditionally essential amino acid. Now, one of its primary functions is to produce a substance known as glutathione. And I have a slide for you. We can pop up as well, just to kind of show you some of the different functions of N-acetylcysteine, but it produces glutathione. Now, why is this important? Glutathione is your liver and your body's master antioxidant. So think of it like this. Your liver needs glutathione to process the chemicals, the exposures to toxins, the day-to-day -day wear and tear that your body is under. Your liver needs glutathione as an antioxidant to process that. And N-acetylcysteine is, is a necessary component of glutathione. Now, glutathione is actually what's called a tripeptide. What does that mean? It means it's, it's three amino acids that are connected together. And so N-acetylcysteine is one of them, but also glutamine is another. Now, you've maybe heard me talk about glutamine, and we'll talk a little bit about it tonight. And methionine is another. So these three amino acids come together and form the tripeptide glutathione. And as glutathione's function is to help your liver detoxify your body, it is the master antioxidant. And when you're low in glutathione, you're basically, your toxicity bucket can fill up much, much faster, making you more susceptible to environmental toxins and other environmental exposures to chemicals, etc thus lending toward creating or contributing to making you sick over time. So very, very important in acetylcysteine because it's a direct precursor. And by taking this supplementally, you actually improve or increase your body's internal levels of glutathione. So that's one of the major, major functions of in acetylcysteine. Now, one of the other functions of N acetylcysteine is it's known as a mucolytic. What does that mean? That means it breaks down or breaks apart mucus. So, where this is very helpful for many people that are, you know, if we're talking about viral problems, one of the things, one of the secondary complications of a viral infection, in whether it's influenza or corona or any other type of virus, is what's called an upper respiratory infection. So it can get into the respiratory tract, into the lungs, it can get into the sinus cavity. And what happens is with an infection is your body's producing a lot more mucus, you can become congested, that mucus increases the thickness, makes it harder to breathe. This is why people get respiratory wheezing um, or, or um, uh, kind of pressure because that mucus is building up inside uh, the, inside the lung tissue or inside the sinuses. So what, what N-acetylcysteine can do, and what's interesting about this is this is actually FDA approved. Glutathione is federally, Federal Drug Administration. This is an improved drug in a sense to break down mucus. So it's an approved FDA approved mucolytic. So it's very, very effective. And if you've ever had chronic congestion, chronic sinus, chronic sinus issues, chronic chest congestion, and used supplements that help break this down, some supplements are, I have a product called Ultra Sinus Support, for example, and one of the main ingredients in it is in, in acetylcysteine. And this is the reason why, because it breaks down mucus and helps you breathe easier. So again, it's an FDA-approved 
agent to treat uh, aggressive mucus secretion coming from the sinuses or the lungs. Now, additionally, it's also FDA approved for this, which is to overcome toxicity of Tylenol or acetaminophen. Um, so in the hospitals, when somebody overdoses on Tylenol, what's used? They use N-acetylcysteine to stop that toxicity from doing further damage. It's actually, again, it's an FDA approved, it's not technically a drug, but technically it is. It's FDA approved drug in hospitals to treat Tylenol toxicity or acetaminophen toxicity. So these are three really important functions of, um, of N-acetylcysteine. So um, what I'm interested though in tonight, so now you kind of have a good understanding is, is what are, how does it function as an agent for improving viral infection outcomes. And, and so the theory and the thought behind how N-acetylcysteine works is that it helps to stop or reduce viral replication. So we can put here, research su suggests that it reduces viral replication. So all viruses have a, an initial uh, period where they break your immune system and they can come in and they can become activated or become active, right? And so first they have to get by what's called your innate immune system, your skin, your mucus barriers. Once the virus breaks through that, then it can get into your cells and it can start hijacking your cellular machinery and it can start replicating in a big way. Glutathione or N-acetylcysteine cannot stop you from getting a viral infection. I want to be very clear there. That's not what, what it does. But what it does is if you start or if you have a virus, in, ess in essence, you've been infected by the virus, what it can actually do is it can reduce viral replication. And so it can, in studies, suggest and show, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put one study up. Let's put that one up on, uh, that's it right there, European Journal uh, your um, attenuation of influenza like symptomatology. So if you can see that slide there, this was a study published and it's, it's not a new study. I mean, these studies have been around for quite a long time. And actually, in my opinion, um, the FDA and the CDC should, should probably fund a lot more research because this is one of the most powerful antiviral agents that doesn't cost a lot of money. A lot of your viral medications are super expensive and they don't really work that well. But the research that's been done on N-acetylcysteine shows that not only does it help prevent viral replication, but what it actually does is, is if somebody gets sick, it reduces the severity of symptoms of their illness. It reduces not only the severity of symptoms. So let me put a little arrow up here. So it reduces severity of symptoms. It also reduces... Um, the length of time of the illness, and it's also been shown to reduce recurring illness. So, glute or N acetylcysteine reduces the severity of the symptoms, it can reduce the length of time that somebody actually spends being sick, and it can reduce. Uh, the risk of them recapturing or re, um, recatching uh, the illness itself. So what, what is the dose? So in the research studies, what's the kind of the dose that we're talking about here to do this? It's actually a pretty low dose. It's about 1,200 to 2,000 milligrams a day was the study dose that showed that this could work in all three areas. Now there's no other, really, if we think about this, there's no other drug that really does that. And again, in, I said before, N-acetylcysteine is not really a drug. It's a nutritional supplement. And so it's, it's very rare that we find a nutritional supplement that actually works better <laughs> than some certain targeted drugs. And, but this is one of those examples where We've got a natural agent that can be used as a nutritional supplement. We can't, you know, from the FDA, they, they watch us and say, you can't make claims of treatment, curing, or 
or diagnosing diseases. But in, in acetylcysteine from a nutritional supplement perspective has been studied to do all of these things, whereas no other antiviral medication has been shown to be as effective in that way as in acetylcysteine. Yet, this is a substance that's not being used in a major way in hospitals. It's not being used in a major way by other doctors. And we have to think about why aren't other doctors making that recommendation? I just showed you a research study and we'll pop another one up for you where you can see the impact on n acetylcysteine on viral uh, replication and inflammation. I just paraphrasing here, you can see therefore antioxidants like n acetylcysteine represent a potential uh, additional treatment option that could be uh, used in the uh, event of an influenza outbreak. So again, very, very strong, very, very potent effects, but doctors ignore the research on this and they continue to make recommendations um, that don't really have any great effects. And a lot of times when people actually start out with a virus, with a viral infection like influenza, is they go to the hospital, they go to the doctor, and a lot of times the doctor gives, doesn't, there's no antivirals that can really be given to do much for this. Some people will take Tamiflu um, that can reduce the duration of illness, but most of the time doctors are gonna give an antibiotic, even though antibiotics don't work. You know, they don't work for a viral infection. A lot of the times you get a steroid, they give steroids to reduce the inflammation so that you have better quality and feel better um, and so problem with steroids is that we don't want to do that necessarily because steroids suppress the immune system and we don't want to be suppressed. Um, we want our immune system working to full capacity here. Otherwise what ends up happening is, is you may improve the way you feel short term by taking the steroid, but you increase the actual longevity of the illness itself. So you know, an antibiotic doesn't really work. A steroid doesn't really work. Your antivirals, if you're talking about the flu, Tamiflu can reduce the duration of symptoms, but uh, at the same time, it doesn't do a whole lot for your immune system. So your actual medical options, all of these things are, are from the perspective of expense, they're more costly, number one, but number two, they're not just more costly in terms of finances, they're more costly in terms of the potential for side effects because the antibiotics can cause yeast overgrowth, which can lead to a whole nother series of problems. Uh, the steroids create GI damage. So they damage the GI tract. They suppress the immune system. Uh, they cause, uh, depending on how long that you're taking them, they cause certain vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So do antibiotics. And so that's, there's a cost that you pay in terms of what happens to you from the side effect perspective. There's also a cost that you pay out of your wallet to be prescribed these things that don't really do a whole lot of good when we're talking about a viral infection. Remember, virus is very different type of animal than let's say a bacterial infection that again, oftentimes get that antibiotic as a form of treatment. So don't necessarily want to just jump to that. A lot of people will get sick and then just jump to those things immediately without proper testing. Now, if you're going to the doctor and you suspect that you have the influenza uh, or God forbid coronavirus breaks out and starts, you know, creating a, a greater degree of spread in the, in the U.S. Um, one of the things you always want to ask for is, it, before taking that antibiotic, is ask for a culture for bacteria. Now, some clinics will have what are called rapid response tests, RRT, we'll just abbreviate that, where they can check you for certain strains like influenza A or B, certain strains of virus, um, or they can check you for certain, they can check for certain types of bacteria rather quickly. But again, in my experience, depending on the doctor that you see, most of the time they're not really doing this. They're just kind of, they're making the diagnosis of infection uh, they're calling it upper respiratory infection or something like that. And they're just giving you the antibiotic just in case you need it. They're giving you the steroid just in case you need it. And then they might just recommend some over-the-counter um, mucolytic-based products um, for you to take to kind of ease your cough or to ease your congestion, etc. When again, uh, the super amino acid in acetylcysteine can do that. Remember, it's FDA approved as a mucolytic, but also very, very effective at reducing 
viral replication. Also, it's important to understand that we've studied other viruses and we know that when a person has a major active viral infection, they're burning through about 6,000 milligrams of NAC, meaning their body, this is what I meant earlier by conditionally essential, under certain conditions you use more than what your body can produce. And, and infection, viral infections is an, an example of that where if you're burning through 6,000 milligrams a day of NAC and you are not, your body's not capable of producing that from your current diet, then supplementation is really the only way to kind of get what you need. So this is, this is, you know, one of the things we know is that about 6,000 milligrams a day are burned in certain viral infections. And so to really be effective, you know, you've got to have a supplement that can provide that type of level to help you, um, basically to help support your ability to recover, uh, much more effectively. So again, this is, this is something that, uh, we didn't talk about in the last episode. We talked about a lot of other things. We talked about zinc and vitamin A and vitamin D and vitamin C and andrographis and elderberry as all different things, echinacea that could help your immune system and support your immune system's ability to fight viruses. But we left in acetylcysteine out and I wanted to talk to you about that tonight. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.